Okay, this isn't going to be a regular introduction. In fact, I'm just going to jump right into the battle. But this is uh, Sweden Fights On. I've started something... Well, I've started the rules to something that... <sighs> are a bit daunting right now. And, well, in order to... Uh, to get me through that period... I kind of delayed and instead of just setting it up and diving in, I decided to play some more musket and pike. Now, on Sweden Fights On, we only have four battles here, officially, now that, but there's several versions to these battles. I'm not going to play them all. For example, for Nord Nordlingen, which we're doing right now, uh, I am planning on doing two versions. Well, the two days of battle. The first one, September 5th, is an initial cav action. What's happened here is the Protestants have shown up to relieve a Catholic siege of Nordling Nordlingen. And at the beginning, the first before the actual full battle starts, uh, some Swedish cav show up and are going to try to drive away the uh, Catholic forces from the field. And then we get to do the main battle. Now, what's kind of weird about this, I think I'm just going to ignore whatever results I get from this. There's no carryover rules in uh, in the game. They just handle it as two scenarios. One, the historical cav thing. Well, then there's a second day uh, where the real battle happens and everything's recharged. Everything's in good shape again. But I thought it's interesting to kick off a pure cav battle, which is what this really is. It's only, uh, you know, it's 10 turns, but not a lot of pieces, no no big infantry or anything. Now, you'll notice a few things about the game right away. This is a different graphical representation, right? Look at these big hexes. Not all the scenarios in this uh, set have these big hexes. This is essentially a very small map blown up. But other maps in this area, in, in, in this particular, uh, the Sweden Fights On set, have pretty small maps. Uh, another little cute thing in the Sweden Fights On, again, I'm doing some of this in, in lieu of an actual introduction. Uh, the other cute thing is that it contains rules for converting Lion of the North into a Musket and Pike game. Now, in the long run, I believe the couple of battles in Lion of the North are handled in Gustav Adolf the Great. So I get no bonus from having picked up that cheap copy of Lion of the North, but that's okay. Uh, I kind of want to see how uh, the great battles of history plays out in this. I know some people actually kind of like that better. Um, you also see you've got some information here. Now this is on the player aid chart. This is not the player aid chart from... Uh, uh, the, the Sweden fights on. I'm using the one from Saints in Armor. I'm also using the base rulebook from Saints in Armor. There's some minor changes. But one of the coolest things is you've got this errata for all the different games in the series so far contained in that rulebook. Uh, and there's some additional counters that have come out in some of the games. And it tells you, hey, what to do with everything you got. <laughs> um, uh, let's see what we got here. So for this particular situation, at the beginning of the game, the Catholics are all that's on the field. Um, I've got this little cav wing here, which has got to be centered on that, around that uh, entrenchment there. And, uh, and cav and entrenchments doesn't work terribly well. Uh, and then uh, I've got this other kind of flying wing, the screening wing or whatever, which... Uh, I don't know. <laughs> I mean, you know, they're both available. They're what I have for the battle for the Catholics. There's a potential to bring some inf uh, some other units in. I think these are all Cav too, actually. Ah, crap. Um, they cost 20 uh, victory points per wing. Now, the Swedes get some reinforcements as well, as you can see. In fact, all their pieces come out as reinforcements. On the first turn, they get automatic, but then on other turns, there's sort of this variable entry option, which I'm going to use, where you roll a die to see which turn they come in on. Uh, While well, you roll a die on each turn starting there. They could come in a little early. They could be delayed later than they actually came in. Uh, I like a little bit of randomness in my games, of course. What's the goal? Well, 
like in all these games, killing things is a goal. Casualties. But then we have these specific hexes. And basically what we have, these are worth five points each. Uh, Landau. Uh, up here on this ridge here. Ederheim down here, these two hexes. Well, actually, yeah, both of them. Herkheim up here. There's a road junction at 1812. Which is down here. And then up here in this all back. Uh, there's also a change to the terrain in the uh, errata. This is now a marshy stream. It was listed as a river, which would be impenetrable. Um, and that's about it. Oh, slopes. Slopes are steep. Uh-oh. That's going to be a pain in the butt for me. But there are channels. It looks like there's a lot of low land in here. It's kind of... Uh, the graphic difference is kind of uh, a little disconcerting. I'm so used to the... Uh, I've got these level changes by color. But... I don't know, there's something I have always liked about these uh, monochrome almost, not really, but, uh, you know, very low on color information maps. It's going to take a little while to get used to, though, because I'm used to my musket and pike having all those different colors in it. Anyway, uh, Swedish calf is going to come in. We'll see how good it is. Let's see if I can knock them over, too. Looks like we got about equal equal armies in terms of quality, but there are obviously a lot more Swedes. We've got some commanded muskets in both cases. Um, dragoons or whatever. Well, let's get started. Well, uh, the Swedes start moving on the board. I've got them under charge order. The scenario allows them to be either under charge or make orders, uh, make ready. Um, they got to come in through one hex, so you see they haven't deployed completely. I'm going to make a quick roll. See if they get a continuation there. I'm going to use uh, Bernard to affect that roll. I'm not sure if that's legitimate because he moved at this point, but eh. uh, I'm the standard five hexes away in order to avoid a counter, uh, any kind of counter charge initial attack, but I'm expecting to get those when I approach. We'll see. Uh, yeah, that's not sufficient, so. We've ended our activity there. And now that's going to give the Catholics a chance to move forward and do set themselves up as they wish. DeWitt's Cav comes sweeping in. Um, the first couple of units are countercharged and knocked back successfully, but then hitting those already engaged uh, or once engaged units, both of them have been driven off the map. Uh, no pursuit off the map, just... Uh, Total success for the, the Catholics, as far as I can see. But they did not get an, uh, a continuation, so now they've got their weak units at the front here with the Swedes able to perhaps drive them out of the way. This is getting bloody real fast. I did want to point out one thing. The two units that got knocked back both had the uh, commanded muskets with them. The Swedes haven't put their commanded muskets on the line. They're actually considering sending them up to take this hex. And, and maybe try to grab some of that valuable terrain. Now, there's a lot of time in this battle, a lot of time to develop out and see if one side can win the battle or not, just outright before, uh, before worrying about that. But that added firepower was very effective at weakening those Swedish units. In each case, it did a, a hit, an extra hit to them, even though they had to pull back. And that's the end of turn one. The Catholic rear cav moving forward slowly, not really able wasn't able to get out of uh, receive charge and wasn't able to get continuation. Because uh, De Verth is a better leader, he got to go first. He managed to drop things into uh, make ready and then reform his units, but he didn't get a continuation. The Swedes then hit hard, they get hit twice. Uh, there was some countercharging going on, but the net effect, not too good for the Catholics. They lost two units. The Swedes are down three, and one ran off the board chasing one of the Catholics. Uh, that's where we sit right now. The question is, this guy, he tried to trump in to prevent that uh, second activation there. 
and that didn't work out too well. So he at most gets one activation. Well, he gets one activation. The question is whether he comes out of uh, receive charge there. The answer is no, he couldn't get to make ready, which is where he was aiming to go. We move to turn three. Um, Kind of an error, this guy, not an error in the rules, but an error in play, uh, who ended up charging off the map. Well, he had to advance, but he didn't have to melee uh, a routed unit, which maybe would have been better to leave alone. He fired his pistols at it, that didn't work. Then he decided to attack anyway. Um, there's always a risk when you're under charge orders. He didn't have momentum, just rolled a big old nine, and that sends you running off the map. Swedes were unable to halt their charge uh, and hit again. Did some definite damage again. Seeing the losses over here. I think another unit ran off the map. And now, well, they got uh, maximum continuations. They were able to change to make ready after uh, that first charge and kind of reform their unit into pretty good shape. There was an attempt to trump in that failed. Uh, now the uh, Catholics are going to have to do what they can to try to form up this force and see if this one can ever do anything. But the Swedes are back in good shape. Um, there's still more Catholics on the map than there are Swedes right now, but there's a big pile of Swedes coming. And now the question then becomes, hey, do the Catholics want to trigger any of these forces in? They're 20 points each, um, but... The Swedes are pretty much guaranteed some pretty decent amount of forces coming in. Certainly that cav is going to come in, which means they will more or less control the field and be able to take what they like, which is worth more than 20 points. And right now, eh, it's not that big a difference. There's a, no, that's a commanded musket. So there's only a five point difference. Uh, no, sorry, 10 point difference. Cav are worth 10 each uh, between the two forces. Catholics still weren't able to drop out a receive charge here, and they barely missed getting a continuation. They moved up within range of counter charges, but in receive charge, it just didn't seem worth slamming into them. There's no great danger there. Yes, there's an advantage to making the counter charges because you get the momentum on your side, but they don't have the pistols. They'd be running far from the rest of the units. It could just cause some significant problems. That's screening this unit, which is actually facing this way because it uh, had fallen back. So the Swedes are trying to do the best they can. We're moving into turn four, which is the first turn where the Swedes have a chance of getting reinforcements. I'm going to load this one up. 